Welcome to the Live Full Work Fun Podcast. This is the show to encourage you to live your life to the fullest and do fun work that fuels your lifestyle. Hi, I'm your host, Gayla Scrivener. Every week, you'll be introduced to amazing guests, useful resources, and inspirational stories. You'll discover opportunities and perspectives to shape your version of living full and working fun. Hello and welcome to the show where we explore topics that help you create your lifestyle to live full and work fun. Speaking of fun, my team has opened a merch store for inspiration to always remember to live full and work fun. We have mugs and some apparel so far and we've just gotten started. So I encourage you to visit livefullworkfun.store often and hop on this journey with us in sharing the Live Full Work Fun philosophy. Check out all that cool merch that Brandy is creating at livefullworkfun.store. Now, on with the show. I am thrilled to have as my guest today, David Jennings. In 2016, David successfully systemized himself out of his business, one of Australia's most trusted digital agencies, MelbourneSEOServices.com. He hired a CEO and stepped back from the daily operations. Through his process, he became a systems devotee, founding System Hub and Systemology. Today, his mission is to free all business owners worldwide from the daily operations of running their business. Recognized as a high-achieving entrepreneur, you'll find many of David's keynote presentations on YouTube, including TEDx, WordCamp, and ProBlogger. So, let's not delay any more and let's hop over to my conversation with David. Welcome, David, to the show. It is I am just so thrilled that you're here with me today. Uh, thank you for having us. I'm I'm excited to talk about systems with another person who loves systems, especially marketing systems. I love systems. <laughs> and I have been a fan of your book, Systemology, for quite some time now. I don't remember how I came across it, but I have it as one of my top on my Audible that I refer to often. I just want to say thank you. I think it's such a wonderful book and the resource. And in fact, I love what you do and appreciate all the value you bring to folks like me, the small business owner. Very kind of you to say. And I I wrote the book that I wish I had when I got started because I, I love systems and processes and it's not so much the documenting. I just love the result of what the systems do. And I really felt like they're just, there's not a great amount of work on the how to all the work that's currently out, a lot of it just focuses on the why to. And that was kind of really a big part of thought, well, what would I want? And I tried to break it down into a system. I love it. And you know, for many folks like me, creating a full life means that we want to be our own boss. We create a business and we want to do this because maybe we have more control over our schedules and then we can create financial freedom. But then we do it and we realize being an entrepreneur is really hard. It is super hard. And I think many of us find ourselves feeling stuck or trapped in the very business that we created. Was there ever a time that you felt that way? I think in every business that I start, like those first few years of business in particular, the business owner just grinds it out and it's easy to feel trapped. And sometimes you're easily able to step out. And then other times you get trapped a little bit longer in my digital agency, which was the last business that I was involved in before systemology. I was stuck in the operations for about 10 years, which I think is probably about maybe seven or eight years too long. And so it's, it's quite common. And usually, I mean, Michael Gerber, talked about this way back when in his book, The E-Myth, where it was this idea of the technician having an entrepreneurial seizure. So it's the hairdresser who thinks, oh, because I can cut hair, I can run a hairdressing business. Or because I'm a plumber and I know how to fix pipes, I can run a plumbing business. But very quickly, the technician realizes that it's two very different skills to know how to do the thing 
and actually run a business that does the thing. And it's that gap that the technician oftentimes can't jump. And that's really what traps them because they just get used to doing the work, doing the work, doing the work. That's all they've ever known. And that's the picture they create in their head. So that's just what they keep doing. How do you break out of that? Definitely the... Whenever I have a discussion with business owners, we always agree that systems and processes are important and business owners intuitively know that. It's kind of like, well, how do we get started? Where do we do it? Or sometimes it's, I tried that before and it didn't work. Um, So I think the way to break out is systems and processes. And there's a lot of benefits that come from systemizing what you're doing and delegating down to less skilled, oftentimes lower cost team members to free you up as the business owner to work on these higher value tasks. Um, but that's that's really how you get started. It's uh, And that's what systemology is about. Like what are the first 10 to 15 systems that you start on? Like you can't systemize everything. You have to identify a handful to start with, the ones that are going to have the biggest leverage point And then you go to work on that. And I think what makes it so challenging is that you don't see results immediately. Systemizing a business and building a systems-driven company is most definitely a marathon. It's not a sprint. And you'll put a system in place. You won't see much, you know, maybe save five minutes here, 10 minutes there. You put another system in place, you save five minutes here, 10 minutes there. But the real benefit comes much further down the line when it's the accumulation of all of these systems and processes that have completely transformed the business. And that's where a lot gets stuck because they read the systemology book or they read another book, they get inspired. They say, great, I'm going to start this and I'm going to get on it. And they might do it for a week or two and then other important and urgent tasks come up. And the idea of systemizing the business falls back to an important but not urgent task. And then they never get to it. And all of the results and the positive benefits of systemizing happen much further down the track once this asset starts to snowball, once you start to change the culture, once you get new team members on board who only know your systems approach. Um, And all of the resistance happens up front with your existing staff. So there's like a lot of reasons why people don't get going and and also why they don't reach the the holy grail, which is building that systems-driven company. What does a systems-driven company kind of look like? I mean, what should we be striving for? There's a couple of stages that you go through. Uh, in the book, I talk about it as these idea of um, the four stages of business systemization. Like if I think it, if it in terms of uh, where you feel the wins – the first biggest win comes from doing, you know, 10 to 15 systems. You get a little bit of a win because you feel like, oh, I'm I'm starting to get the hang of this and some of the core processes are documented and now we can have key team members execute those and it doesn't always have to be me, the business owner. Then where the real tipping point is, is a point we call minimum viable systems, which happens in the... Uh, sixth stage of systemology, that scale stage, where you start to then have systems touch all aspects of the business. It doesn't mean everything's systemized, but it means you've got some systems in sales and marketing and finance and HR and management. And basically you've got those that systems approach and you've got the most I- important systems identified and captured your way uh, is you know stored in a central location that team members can tap into. Once you get there, that's really the tipping point. But the holy grail, when you know you've made it, is when you actually reach a point where the team says, this is how we do things here. So that's when new team members come on board or someone's asking a question and they say, oh, go look at this document or, oh, this is how we do things here. And effectively what you've done is you've identified your way. Once that happens, that's really when you know you've got the culture bit right. And then it's just a matter of time. Like oftentimes uh, what happens is people look at 
something like McDonald's today having six, systemized for 60 years and they think, ah, that's what a systemized business looks like. But that's the result of 60 years worth of work. And over time, they've kind of developed and they've managed to do every aspect of the business. But if you go back to that tipping point is where you've got a handful of systems in the key departments and the team says, this is how we do things here, then it's just a matter of time. If it's about three years is a gauge of, you know, okay, I've been working in my business and I don't have time to work on my business. So I'm I'm working in in my business about three years. If it's like, you know, I should be thinking about pulling away a little bit so that I can grow and scale. If you were in, in your one business kind of stuck for 10 years, what kept you stuck? What, mm. what are some of the signs? I mean, an awareness? Uh... Um, it was strange in hindsight. I look back now and I go, what was I thinking? But like, because I had previous businesses that we had systemized. Like I had a rock and roll clothing music store that we franchised. So we wrote a head office manual, we wrote a store manual, and I wasn't working in the stores. So I already had a picture in my head of what a business could look like systemized without me doing the thing. But for some reason, when I got to the digital agency, I came up with all these excuses why this business was different. I thought, well, we're a creative digital agency and my team's not going to want to follow process because we're creative. And I thought if I put systems and processes in place because we're doing digital marketing, the landscape is updating and changing so much, these systems are very going to quickly be out of date. So what's the point of getting a system in place? And I thought, uh, like I built the business where I trained the staff and the clients, whenever there was a problem, because I was the subject matter expert, you would just come to Dave. I was the knight in shining armor. I was staying on top of all of the trends. I was consuming the content and I was kind of like the focal point for the business. For whatever reason, I just talked myself out of the idea of systemizing because I thought, well, there's certain things I can systemize. We can systemize how to do an invoice and we can systemize how to send weekly updates. But there was a bunch of things I thought we couldn't systemize. And it wasn't until I started testing some of those assumptions and um, when we found out we were pregnant and I thought, nah, stuff's got to change because I was working really, really long hours. And then I started to test some of those assumptions and realized that was just my baggage and I just needed to adjust the way that I was thinking. Um, so I, for that business, I needed a catalyst, something that kind of get, got me to go, hang on, this isn't right. Because otherwise business owners, sometimes they just get stuck. Like uh, some business owners, it's almost like they hit a ceiling and they move sideways for years without any real growth because they're just doing it, doing it, and doing it. And sometimes yeah, you need something to shock you out of that. That could be some some misperceptions about creating processes and systems like you're the only one that can do it or you're the one that just thinks on the fly type thing or or your industry changes so much that it cannot be systemized are there any other misperceptions entrepreneurs have you touched on a couple of them there i think business owners think they're going to need hundreds of systems oftentimes they think that the developing the systems is going to be quite time consuming Sometimes they think they might need some complex software or something, or they think that their team won't follow the process. They think that systems might remove creativity, or they think that they might need to systemize like McDonald's. And it's funny, I, I bring this one up because I'll, I'll use McDonald's as, as an example as a great systemized business. But also on the flip side, that doesn't mean that the listener right now should systemize like McDonald's because there's a very good chance you don't run a hamburger store and you don't recruit 15-year-old kids off the street and you want them flipping hamburgers by Monday. So you don't need to document to that level of detail because you might be recruiting A players that are highly skilled who are joining your team and they need less of a framework because if you over-systemize and over-document, you can also repel great team members. I remember hearing an interview with Reed Hastings, um, one of the founders of Netflix, 
when they first started this whole approach of systemizing a business, they said, we wanted to systemize everything. We wanted to make sure that we dummy proofed our business. But the only thing was after they did that, only dummies wanted to work there. And that was kind of like the that light bulb moment to go, you can go too far and Sometimes you just got to really think about your business and you don't create systems for systems sake. You really do create systems to make the job of your team easier. I love that you said that and reading your book that that gave me per- perception because I I started on this pendulum of over systemizing. But then I want a team that can think for themselves and navigate and go with their gut and serve our clients well. But having that framework of, okay, this is the way we do things, having the the system to be have enough room to think. It's not being so granular that you must say each step of push this button, go mm. over here to this part of the screen, because tools they change all the time. So as soon as you create that type of system of exactly how to and what buttons to push, instead of being a little bit more lax on the exact, it allows your folks to to think more. And I have gone on that pendulum kind of back and forth a little bit. But another thing that I just loved about your, your book is that you mentioned having a having a tool to have the library of your systems and a different tool for the to-dos. I was thrilled on, you know, I, I'm pretty sure that you mentioned that you used Asana. And so I was like, validated is like, oh, good. This is great. Because I I was wondering to mesh them together, but that muddied things up in my mind. Yeah. And there's at different points where uh, mixing them together becomes a challenge for a few reasons. Oftentimes the tools that try to do both originally started as one and then they added the second thing on, which means they don't tend to do the second thing very well. So that's one thing. The second thing is as your team grows, different teams may be using different tools as you grow and scale. And you might also change project management platforms, or there might be, you know, in the trades-based businesses, I see businesses, they use one platform for some of their internal stuff, but they have a separate jobs management platform. So then you start to get this issue where things are splintered. Whereas if you at least have your knowledge in one location, then you just reference the one knowledge base from whatever tool you're using. And if you change tools, add tools, whatever, you just reference that system. It also makes it much easier when it comes time to exit as well, because you can kind of wrap everything up. I remember um, we had a a client, uh, she ran a a doggy daycare center, Jeanette was her name, Diggy Doggy Daycare. And I talk about her uh, a little bit because she went through the systemization process and sold to a very large ASX listed company here in Australia called Petstock. And they, what they purchased, they said two things. They purchased the financial performance of the store and they saw the store as a franchise prototype and all of the systems. They had all of their internal enterprise level project management platform. So what they did is they just um, took all of that knowledge base and, and effectively, you know, sucked it into their systems. So it was kind of like nice to package it all up and say, right, here's all the IP that um, you're purchasing and they could serve it up on a silver platter without kind of being muddied and buried inside a project management platform. When a business does systemize, I mean, I, I love that you say it is a, a marathon and not a sprint because I think we get, we do get all excited. And it's like, oh, well, next week it'll all be in line. But our business evolves. And if we're a very small business, small team, maybe we're a solopreneur. And before we even hire our our first VA or any assistant, do you have any suggestions on what we should like document or, or have a system? Or should Mm. we rely on somebody new coming in to tell us what the system is? 
create that question because I when I wrote the systemology book I wrote it with a specific person in mind and you do need to make some adjustments if you're a micro team or even like a solopreneur because it's written for the person who has a little bit of traction has a small team around them and is really finding themselves the bottleneck the couple of micro changes that you need to make to the system are things like uh, you can't over document when it's just you because you don't really get any huge leverage from the fact that it's just you and you're not going to be able to pass it to anyone anyway. So the way to think about it is you want to set up your folder structure in a Google Drive or Office 365 or something, like a shared cloud directory, and then you start to think about your different departments and then you just start recording little videos of you doing the tasks and saving it into the relevant folder. So there might be issuing an invoice and you record yourself three or four times issuing out an invoice and just save those recordings in the folder. And then you find some other tasks and you basically over a period of maybe six months, you develop all of these little videos showing different aspects of the business. And then you make your first hire if you haven't already got one, but some sort of virtual assistant who comes on board who you give them a copy of systemology and you say, this is how we do things here. I need your help to transform some of these videos into basic checklists. Again, we don't need to go hog wild here, just very simple checklists combined with the videos. You say to them, look, watch all four, pick out the one that you think is the best, write out some bullet points, and then let's have a discussion about it. When you go through that process, the VA will start to identify which of those tasks they can do. Like some of them will be more complex and some of them they'll be able to go, oh, I can issue out invoices for you or I can book that calendar appointment in. And effectively what they do in the process of doing the checklist is also identify which ones they can start to help out with. And that's the first step or two for you to be able to delegate down because that's the real key here. Like as we create a systems and uh, processes, it's about passing down responsibility and freeing up higher skilled team members to work on only the tasks that they can do. So I always capture a system and a process as the vanilla or the the blue skies version. If everything went just right and the client said yes in all the right places and everything was smooth and it was just as it should be for a chosen product or service, this is how it would happen. Anytime it falls outside of that, that's when you can escalate it to a more senior team member. They can take it. And that's when, like, that's the process of learning. You want the new assistant to have all of the underarm throws first, just so they can have a crack at it, get it right. Then over time, they learn exceptions and they can decide if that gets built into a system or if that becomes on the job training. Well, I love how you... Uh, broke that down to the the solopreneur perspective because they can start th- leaning into that before before their first hire and it's very applicable uh, even though your book is written for for someone that does have a small team. Now I know that you have other resources besides the book that c- go along with the with systemology. Can you speak to, to yeah, those resources? Yep. So um, generally, if someone's starting out, I, I'll point them to like Amazon or to Audible for the book. Like you mentioned, if you're listening to this, there is an Audible version as well. And the book is useful and complete. I've got many clients who just take it, run with it and had great success. And then for those that just need a bit of extra help, we have basically three levels. There's either a Do It Yourself, which is an online program, which is actually really tailored for the systems champion. So we talk about identifying a systems champion and it's training for them. Or there's a group program where the systems champion and the business owner goes through a program for six months, or you can work directly. We have consultants that we train up uh, called systemologists, and they work one-on-one with larger businesses to then basically help deploy the technology in their companies. Do you have uh, tools also? Did you have like a a piece of software that you help document systems? Yes. Yep. So we do also have a SaaS, um, which software as a service, which is just uh, a home for your systems and processes. That's called System Hub. And it's just a very basic, tailored, purpose-built piece of software 
to basically become a home for your systems and your processes. I love that. I've tinkered with with that uh, as well. And in your book, you direct uh, the reader where to go and how to try it out. And I love it. Is is there anything else that uh, you'd like to share about systems? And Yeah. Look, uh, anybody can build a systems-driven business, even if they don't see themselves as a systems person. It's about getting the right team members around you. And it's about leading this. Like, like you don't have to be the person who does the documentation. And we we actually encourage finding a systems champion and working with them. Almost like I talked about with our solopreneur example a moment ago, which is you get a VA on board to help you out to do that first level of documentation. So starting the process, and if you have thought in the past, oh, I've tried this and it didn't work or systems aren't for me because of X, Y, Z. I'm hoping that we've kind of lit a bit of a fire and and give you a way to kind of challenge some of these assumptions because the the difference, like I've looked in hundreds, if not thousands of businesses, and I've seen the difference between a systemized business and a non-systemized business. And it's like night and day difference. Like systemized businesses operate more efficiently there's less stress in there. They make more profit. Um, they're more valuable. There's so many benefits that come from systemizing a business. There's no other way to grow and scale a business without systems and processes. So whether you tackle this now or you tackle it later, uh, it has to be crossed if you want to get the freedom that you want from your business. And it doesn't get easier later. Like, if anything, it gets harder because your team gets stuck in their ways. So the sooner you can get started on this, the better. I love that. And what struck me, a couple of things that struck me is that the stress level or the franticness picture in my mind was I've worked for offices that are calm, cool, and collected. And that's what I, I like to create my culture to be cool, calm, and collected because it's a much happier workspace. Then I've worked for offices that it's just seems like chaos and so stressful and and it's it doesn't have to be and it just it and it seems to come from the top down <laughs> and and yeah. and that that really spoke to me and something from your book that really uh, spoke to me was how systemizing creates other opportunities. And your story at the very beginning on your opportunity of working with Michael Gerber was just like amazing. If you didn't systemize, you would not, the The story of it is that you were able to leave your business for a big chunk of time. And if you weren't systemized, you couldn't do that and, and, and take on that opportunity. Yeah. I think a lot of business owners don't realize how many opportunities are floating around them that they just miss. Sometimes they don't even see them because they're just head down, bum up, doing the work. But sometimes you have to stop. You have to look up. You have to survey the landscape. You have to look left and right to see what's there. And then you have to, once you spot the opportunity, have the space to take advantage of the opportunity. And a lot of business owners, if the deal of the century fell into their lap, many of them wouldn't be able to take advantage of it because they they can't step away from the business. I appreciate you being here and I appreciate you actually uh, just being able to know you from afar through your book. So thank you so much. Thank you. What's the best way for people to connect with you and, and follow follow you? Besides reading your book, I mean, I'm going to have yeah. that link and all the contact links in, in the show notes, but what's the best way? On systemology.com, which is our website, there's links to socials. We're doing quite a bit on YouTube. So there's plenty of helpful things just to kind of move people along and keep systems front and center. So systemology.com is the best place. Thank you so much. I appreciate you being here. Well, thanks for being here with me today. I encourage you to scroll down to the show notes for all the links of the resources that David mentioned. I sincerely recommend getting his book, Systemology. 
Now, although he wrote it for business owners with a team larger than mine, I found great value in it and was able to apply many of the principles that made my work and the work of my team so much easier. Well, thanks again for listening. Please subscribe to the show to get all the latest episodes. And remember to check out all of our merch at livefullworkfun.store. Until next time, have a fantastic week. Live full, work fun. Work fun.